Oh, oh my, 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 my. Jesus Freak, I watched your video before I went to work today. It was a mistake because it's been bugging me all day long. I was originally mad at you. But uh, I'm glad I didn't post a response this morning because the more I think about it, I realize my anger was misplaced. Um, I'm not going to... It's, it's pointless to discuss scripture with you, so I'm not going to even try. Let's just, let's just keep the facts straight. Let's be in a bullshit-free zone. Um, you mentioned micro and macro evolution. And uh, this is not the first time that I've heard these two versions of evolution, but um, I have never heard about these two versions of evolution being discussed in a, in a science class. The first time I heard about this was actually from somebody I would consider a Christian propagandist uh, on YouTube actually somebody had posted a video of one of his lectures I forget his name I'm sure you can find it I'm sure you've seen it <clears throat> so you said you believe in micro evolution um, okay yeah micro evolution fantastic alright uh, we're talking single celled organisms here like bacteria, groups of bacteria, developing immunities to antibiotics over a period of time. It's very simple. Thinking about single-celled organisms is the easiest way to really get the point across for right now. Okay, so you've got a group of bacteria, and because of the random, this is the only random part of an evolution, the random mutations of DNA. DNA is is almost perfect at copying itself, but it's not quite perfect. That little bit of imperfection, that's where mutations come in. And you can see it in the plethora of different animals around you. I'm not going to go into it. Okay, so you've got a group of bacteria, and due to the um, speed at which they reproduce, you know, bacteria, you know, reproduce exponentially, you'll get a decent amount of variation, very small variations, in, ver in a relatively short period of time. <clears throat> if you attack them with an antibiotic, it'll kill off all of the bacteria, except those very few that just happen to have a mutation, just happened to have a mutation, that rendered them immune to that particular antibiotic. So what you're doing is you're culling all but one type. All but one type. And of course they spread exponentially and now all of their children will have inherited various forms of this mutation that enabled them to be immune to the antibiotic. And then you've got a whole breed I'll use breed because that's closely accurate. A whole breed of bacteria that is, just happens to be immune to that form of antibiotic. <clears throat> that would be a form of artificial selection, which is something that I'm sure you're familiar with. It enables us to breed different types of vegetables, different types of fruits, and all of the different types of dogs, cats, cows, sheep that you see that we've domesticated over the years. You attributed that, the differences between wolves and dogs, you attributed that to microevolution, similar to the bacteria. But it, because, you're right, that is the same process that's going on. You're choosing, in the bacteria example, you chose by accident. It just happened. You didn't want to save the ones that were immune to the antibiotic. You just happened to. But um, when you're breeding a new breed of dog, when you're breeding fruits, like, I don't know, like a banana, right? You like a certain type of banana. It's got, like, you like the ones that are a little longer, 
the ones that are a little, a little fuller, that the trees maybe produce more fruits, those are the seeds that you plant. You plant those seeds, you get more trees with the same attributes, you pick the ones you like best out of those, you plant those seeds. And, you know, a couple generations down the line, you've got a whole new breed of banana or dog or cat, whatever. That's called artificial selection where the choosing of which traits to carry forth from generation to generation is done by, des by design, by us. We're the artificial selectors. The, um, even if we do it by accident, like with the, uh, the bacteria. Now, what, um, what Darwin came up with, and it took him a while, believe me, he was, uh, he was a Christian before he went to the Galapagos Islands. He was a Christian when he was on the Galapagos Islands. Not until he came back to England and really poured over his notes did he come to the realization that the same technique that people had already been using for years and years and years to breed dogs, to breed pigeons, to breed fruits and vegetables, the same mechanics that allowed for the variation uh, might be just occurring naturally in the world around us where instead of people choosing which offspring to breed that just whatever traits happened to be best got selected to breed the uh, dog that's a little stronger the cheetah that was a little faster the, um, the bird that could fly a little better. Eventually, um, you keep going at that for a few million years, you get totally new species. The mechanics are the same. I know uh, you're probably not convinced by what I'm saying, but hopefully uh, somebody else who's watching this video is giving it a second thought. The differentiation between these two forms of evolution is totally unnecessary micro and macro evolution you already gave, ex gave examples of what you would call macro evolution when you talked about the differences between wolves and dogs that's just uh, the mechanics between the bacteria and the mechanics between the dogs are the mechanics between the naturally occurring different varieties of birds or monkeys the mechanics are the same the selection process is what's different. Artificial selection, how we breed dogs, how we breed cattle, how we breed horses, how we breed fruits and vegetables, the choosing is done by us, whichever ones we like best, for whatever criteria you can think of. Different shapes of dogs, more plentiful crops, whatever. The, uh, the forces that choose who propagates in nature is nature. The, uh, the laws of physics themselves guide who's more successful. Competition in the environment chooses who's more successful. That's natural selection. As far as the fossil records go, I don't know where you're getting your information. The fossil records for the transition from ape, great ape, to humans isn't, I mean, you're trying, you might be trying to simplify it, isn't a step ladder. It is a branching tree. Actually, it's, a, it's almost a bush. It's so short. We've got a lot of different cousins that are gone because we happen to be better at hunting, at remaining in groups, at taking care of each other. We're the survivors because we were better at doing whatever it was. Uh... I'm, I'm not going to convince you. I, I know I'm not going to convince you. It's, um, you're, you're taking the, the Bible as fact, uh, not open to being questioned, and uh, that's uh, a sadly uh, a closed-minded view. And you probably think, I'm oh, I'm influenced by Satan, but believe me, I don't believe in Satan any more than I believe in God. I think the notion is superstitious and foolish.